As we've seen, it's the number of protons in the nucleus that dictate what type of atom we are working with. However, variations in the number of neutrons in a nucleus can also have really important implications in the chemistry that an atom can undergo, especially when we're thinking about the field of nuclear chemistry, which is important for things like the atomic bomb or producing nuclear energy. So let's explore this idea a little bit. Okay, so chlorine, which is one of the elements we looked at in the previous video, we said has, right, so there's a form of chlorine that has a mass number of 35. But as it turns out, there's also a form of chlorine that has a mass number of 37. Okay, so both of these two chlorine atoms have the same number of protons. They both have atomic numbers of 17. The only thing that differs is the number of neutrons. So in the case of the chlorine 35 atom, we have, we said we had 18 neutrons. But in the case of the chlorine 37, we're gonna have 20 neutrons. So the difference in these two atoms is the number of neutrons in the nucleus. So we call these two different forms of chlorine isotopes. Okay, so we, chlorine has two common isotopes, a chlorine 35 isotope and a chlorine 37 isotope. So whenever you hear the term isotope, that's really all we mean. That means it's the form of that atom that has a total of 35 nuclear particles or a total of 37. And the reason these two chlorine isotopes exist is because they're both pretty darn stable. Okay, and in fact, if you were to scoop up a sample of pure chlorine, you would end up with a mixture of these two isotopes. So exactly 75.78% of the sample would be the chlorine 35 isotope, and the remaining 24.22% would be the chlorine 37 isotope. Okay, so this is really important because the fact that both of these isotopes are naturally occurring and they both contribute to the, 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 the mass of chlorine, we need to consider each of these two isotopes when we come up with um, the actual mass of the atom, right? The, the observed mass of a chlorine atom. Okay, so since each of these two isotopes have a different number of nuclear particles, right? We said that we, we, we both have 17 protons, but we have either 18 or 20 neutrons. So they have a different mass because they have a different number of nuclear particles. And in fact, the chlorine 35 isotope has a mass of 34.9688 AMU. AMU stands for atomic mass unit. And it's pretty close to the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, okay? A chlorine 37 isotope has a mass of 36.9659 atomic mass units. So since these two isotopes have a different mass, and when you pick up a sample of pure chlorine, you have both of these um, isotopes present, then they both influence the mass of, the average mass of a single chlorine atom. And this is the idea of natural abundance. So our goal over the next couple of minutes here is to figure out a way to calculate the average isotopic mass of chlorine. Okay, and as we'll see, it's the average isotopic mass that's the most important um, for our purposes in chemistry. All right, so let's think about this. So the average mass of an isotope is gonna be equal to the percent of isotope A, we'll say. So we'll say that chlorine 35 is isotope A and chlorine 37 is isotope B. So the average mass can be calculated by taking the percent of isotope A times the mass of isotope A. And then we wanna make sure this is in decimal form, so we take it divided by 100. Plus the percent of isotope B divided by 100 times the mass 
of isotope B. Okay, and this idea can actually be extended out to as many isotopes as we have. So if we happen to have three isotopes, we would add on one more term, the percent of C divided by 100 times the mass of C. Okay, so we have enough information to calculate the average mass. We know the percent of A. We're told that the chlorine 35 isotope is 75.78%. And again, we're going to convert this to decimal form. So we take it divided by 100. We're going to take this divided or times the mass of isotope A. So 34.9688 plus the percent of isotope B, which we know it's 24.22% divided by 100 times the mass of isotope B, which is 36.9659. And this will allow us to calculate our average isotopic mass. So go ahead and pull out a calculator and plug this in. And you should come up with the average mass for a chlorine atom equaling 35.45 and the unit is still the atomic mass unit. Okay, and if we did our math correctly, then this value should match up perfectly with what we find on our periodic table. So let's go ahead and flip to our periodic table, find chlorine, right? So remember chlorine was element 17, and what you'll note here is the number below chlorine is 35.45. That is the average isotopic mass. If you do your math correctly, then they should average out to be 35.45, and that's exactly what we saw. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and explore how to work this problem backwards.